Hello everyone, I'm back again for another Wine Wednesday. Uh, thank you to everyone who watched the video last week. Uh, it was a fun video to do, so I hope everyone enjoyed it. Uh, the comparison of Syrah versus Shiraz, uh, the same grape in two different styles. Um, so this week we're gonna do something a little bit different. I am gonna go to white wine, as you can see here. Uh, so I'm gonna compare two aromatic varietals uh, that people don't necessarily gravitate to. You don't see it on wine lists a lot, especially by the glass, and uh, it's not something that people really kind of pick off the shelf at the LCBO because usually they don't, they've never tried it and they don't really know what it is. So um, it's kind of that fear of being disappointed when you bring home your wine. Um, so I'm hoping this helps you um, maybe find a new favorite wine. Um, so the two wines that we have here uh, we have a uh, Tarantes. So this is the Tarantes. Both of these wines are under $20 at the LCBO. You don't need to spend a lot of a lot of money on, on this wine uh, to get a good quality wine that will kind of suit your needs for this style. Um, so this is the Tarantes. It's from Argentina. This is the Albarino that I got um, and it's from Spain. Um, so keep in mind that aromatic varietals requ require uh, a cooler climate to uh, make the aromatic wine. Um, so the reason being uh, is that you essentially, to make an aromatic wine, you need the flavors and uh, the aromas to develop in the grape uh, before you make the resulting wine. In hot regions, Spain and Argentina being hot regions, uh, what they have to do in those regions is they have to go north and they have to go higher altitude. So anything above 1500 meters above sea level or so uh, will kind of get you a, a cooler climate. Uh, this will allow the grape to develop the flavors and the aromas at the same time as the sugar. So it kind of slows down the sugar ripening so that you don't have to pick the grapes as fast and therefore you get a resulting uh, aromatic wine, okay? So we'll start with the Tarantes being uh, very aromatic. I would say between the two, the Tarantes definitely takes, uh, takes the cake on being the most aromatic. So right off the hop, when you smell the wine, you get a ton of flavors. I always get lychee, there's uh, like candied lemon. Um, I get a lot of nectarine peach, like really, really ripe peach, that juicy kind of peach. Um, there's no oak on either of these wines, so it's just all grape aromatics, uh, soil, um, terroir. You get a lot of that. Um, so when you're smelling this wine, especially the Torontos, when you smell the wine, you think for sure it's gonna be sweet on the palate. That's how much flavor and aromatics there are coming out of this glass. It's just lofting out of the glass. Um, it is not, it is completely dry on the palate, proving it. So when you do take a sip, number one, it's dry. Number two, it can be perceived as being sweet because there's so much flavor. Everything that I just explained on the nose echoes on the palate. So you definitely get a ton of flavor um, coming from this wine. Beautiful wine to honestly just drink on its own on the patio. Um, it's almost like a cooler uh, for wine people um, because it's just, there's so much flavor. There's so much going on in it. Um, that being said, it also does go with food. Um, so I, I'm sure a lot of us have been kind of ordering in a lot. Um, maybe you uh, can make this kind of cuisine on your own at home. Um, but it definitely goes with Indian cuisine very well. Anything kind of Asian or Indian, um, I'm just gonna use Indian as a, as a perfect pairing for now. Um, anything coconut, Thai, curry, anything um, those kind of flavors will go with this wine. The reason being is because it has so much flavor, so many aromatics, so does Indian food, for example, a lot of aromatics. So this can actually stand up to it. If you pair Indian with something that is not aromatic enough, not flavorful enough, it just kind of drowns the wine. So you don't want that. And then moving on to the Albarino. Uh, so when you smell this wine, it's a little less aromatic than the Tarantes just because there's so much going on in the Tarantes. The first thing I always get on Albarino is a little bit of salinity. Salinity is um, essentially just saltiness and that comes from the, it being a coastal region um, near the ocean. You kind of just, it's a call sign for uh, Spanish wines as well. Um, so you get a lot of aromatics still. I get a lot of nectarine. Uh, I get honeydew melon very strong on this wine specifically, um, which is also a call sign for this uh, type of wine. I get lemon zest as opposed to the candied lemon that you get in the Tarantes. So kind of similar flavors, but just in a little bit of a different way. 
Um, I would definitely consider the Albarino more uh, serious food wine. It definitely can be drank on its own on the patio, uh, just like the Trontes can. Uh, but I would definitely prefer to see it with something like a shrimp taco would be a, a shrimp taco or a fish taco. Any kind of, um, you know, lots of flavors going on in the dish. Uh, it goes really well with really any seafood, uh, any shrimp, anything fried would be really nice with this. The little salinity component will kind of be dulled and you'll it'll bring out the fruit a little more. Um, so you'll definitely, um, you know, either of these wines are great value, great with food, great on the patio. Um, hopefully we get some warm weather soon so uh, you can enjoy these on the patio. Um, doesn't look like it in the next coming weeks, but, uh, but we'll see. So there's your two... Uh, aromatic wines being compared. Um, I hope this helps you um, kind of get an idea of what these wines taste like and maybe encourages you to try something um, outside of our Pinot Grigio, Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnays um, and try something new.